Hi, my name is Chenebo Aderi Kousu, and I will be your instructor for the complete course in C programming language for beginners. And I will urge partakers of this course to attentively engage in every aspect and practically try to write the code on their own, as it is the best form of understanding and studying the C language. I hope this course meets your understanding in the C language and I wish you all the best in your studies. Now let's set the ball rolling. Now in this course we will be studying something about IDE. We will build our first C program. We will know the basic synthesis we know the various data types. We will learn about variables. We will also learn about constants and literals. We know the various storage classes. We will learn about operators. We would also be learning about how to make decisions. We will learn about iterations or loops. We will also be learning about functions, uh, scope rules, arrays, pointers, strengths you also be learning about input and output functions you will know what preprocessors are header files typecasting recursion variable arguments memory management and last but not the least command line argument now a program is a set of instructions assigned to perform a specific functions therefore a computer programming language is a medium through which a programmer interacts or communicates with a computer. In performing this, the programmer feeds the computer with sets of instructions to perform a specific functions. Now, C language is a general purpose programming language which is used for writing programs in operating systems numerical computations, graphic applications, and many more. Now, when a programmer gives sets of instructions to the computer, translations are being done by special softwares called IDE, which makes the computer to understand the given instructions. Hi. In the introductory part of our course, we learned that the programmer gives instructions to the computer and then specially made softwares translate this program or instructions to an understandable language to the computer. Now, let's learn about IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. They are specially built softwares that assist in writing, editing, compiling and executing the program of a particular language. Examples of IDEs are CodeBlocks, NetBeans, Anjuta, CodeLite, DevC++, TurboC++ and many more. But in this course, we will be using CodeBlocks. And then code blocks can be obtained freely on their website www.codeblocks.org slash download and after successfully downloading your code blocks you will start to build a first C program after we have launched our code blocks so let's try to build our first C program using our code blocks but also you can also try with other IDEs of your choice but I will be dealing with code blocks so let's begin our first C program Now, 
we have successfully launched our cold blood. So let's try to build our first C program. So we click on new project. Then we go to console application. We double click that. Then we click next. As we are dealing with C, let's select C and then we click next. Let's give the project a title. So let's title this project as C language. language and then we click next and the compiler will be J and U GCC compiler so let's click finish okay so let's begin to build our first C program from this workspace we can see the project title over here You can see our project title over here. So we can see our project title over here, and then under it, we can see sources. So under sources, just double click on sources. We can see main.c then we click on main.c and then we have been given our main so this is our first c program so let's try to you know type them by ourselves so that we can be able to understand every part of it so first of all hash include stdio dot h int main then printf then the double quotations and let's type hello world okay semicolon so let's try to you know run this program and see the outcome you see that this project has not been loaded. Do you want to build it now? Yes. Should have built it before you know, running. Sorry for the delay because we should have, you know, built it and run it. But we were rather, you know. So our program has been built successfully. So this is a program it has been built as a hello world has been you know printed. Okay. So we press any key in this. Okay. Thank you very much. This is our first C program which has been built successfully. Please kindly try to you know compile it uh, write the program and compile it yourself. Yeah. Let's see. Hi, in our previous lesson, we learned about how to build our first C program. And our program was in the form of this hash include less than sign stdio.h greater than sign int main bracket addresses double slash this is my first C program print F hello world 
and semicolon return zero semicolon now the first line the first line include stdio.h is called a preprocessor this is called a preprocessor this is telling us that we are including a header file called stdio stdio now which is a header file so stdio.h becomes a header file it is a header file hence dot h we will learn about that very soon and then int main in brackets is the main function from where execution will begin the next line the double slash is also used to comment on programs or it enables the reader to understand what the programmer is doing therefore they are being ignored during execution now let's learn something about basic syntax remember syntax is the laid down procedures for writing a statement they are also called the formulas for writing a statement so in, in every formula you can't maneuver or jump from one to another unless you follow the lay down procedures before you can write a program in C. So the procedures that we follow is called centers. Now let's learn something about tokens. Tokens consist of either a keyword, an identifier, a constant string or a symbol. For instance, print f bracket double quote hello world the individual tokens are one print f two the open bracket three hello world four closing bracket and five semicolon these are various tokens before we can you know write a program for this these are the various or the individual tokens we have in this now the semicolon that we saw is used in programming when you want to terminate or end a statement that is why we have this semicolon here after we uh, build our first program we terminated it with this semicolon we terminated it with this semicolon so it enables the the, the 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 program on which one is writing to end now we have ways of giving comments on the program that the programmer is building and in as much as the programmer is writing it for himself the reader in order to understand what the programmer is doing the program will have to indicate this or that so this one also will be ignored during execution so we will try our hands on that one and then see them once again we also have identifiers which is used to identify a variable function or user defined items they start with letters a to z in block letters or a to z in small letters and numbers and underscores examples nana duku busy underscore bone 
Derek 399, item 34, and etc. etc. We also have keywords. Keywords are inbuilt words in C language. They are 32 keywords in C. Remember, keywords cannot be used as a variable. For instance, we have keywords like auto, break, long, switch, return, static, void, long, while, and many more. The user cannot use any of these keywords as a variable. We will learn about variables later. We also have something called white spaces. It's a blank space that separates two elements. For instance, INT white space main. We have a space between the INT and main. So that one is differentiating between these two elements, INT and main. So white spaces help the compiler to be able to differentiate between INT and main. But for me, let's take a look at uh, vehicle is equal to BMW plus Toyota. Remember, there is no white space in them. They are all classified as a single statement. So there is no white space between them. Now, let's get, get back to our program that we built and see something. Hi, in our previous lesson, we learned about how to build our first C program. And then we can see that our first C program was in the form of this. Hash include stdio.h. Uh, we place our comment over here and then int main and then uh, braces printf hello world semicolon now in this as far as this is concerning before our program was being built it followed something called a syntax a syntax now a syntax or basic syntax is a lay down procedures for writing a statement they are also called the formulas for writing a statement so therefore, you can't ignore the formulas before you can reach your target or your aim. That is why we quoted this hash include stdio, int main, uh, braces, and then printf hello world. Before this single hello world was being printed, as we saw from our first program that we built. So the various or the lay down procedures for writing a statement is called a syntax. Let us also learn something about tokens. Now, tokens consist of either a keyword, an identifier, a constant, string, or a symbol. For instance, the individual tokens for printing or maybe programming hello world uh, we have printf here one we have this open bracket two this whole thing in quotation three we also have closing bracket we have a semicolon we have closing brace opening brace int main open and then closing bracket they are all tokens they are all tokens so as far as token or the syntaxes are concerned these are, are various tokens and then which are being combined in order to follow the syntax 
in order to fall a syntax. Okay, now let's go to the various tokens which were involved in the syntax. Now, we have semicolons. Semicolons are being used to terminate a statement. So every statement that you write must be ended by semicolon to show a termination. Either than that, when you neglect semicolon, your program cannot be run. Okay. We also have the double slash or a single slash with a star symbol and then a star with a closing slash, which are also used for commenting. So when you want to help the reader to know what exactly you are doing, you just indicate them by a double slash and then write the comment so that the read reader would understand or know what you are about that is why in our program that we built we had something like this something like this is the same as also this one they are all the same so you can either use this or that now let's learn something about identifiers an identifier is used to identify a variable function or user defined items they start with letters capital a to capital z or small a to small z or numbers and underscores example you can have a user defined name like this one nana Duku, busy underscore bone, there is 399, item 34, etc. They are all identifiers. Let's also learn something about QS. They are inbuilt words in C language. They are inbuilt words in C language. We have 32 QS in C languages. Remember, keywords cannot be used as a variable. So, the keywords that have been made or that has been built in C language cannot be used as a variable. Example of such keywords we have auto, break, long, switch, return, static, void long while and many more you can't use any of these words or keywords as a user defined or a, as a variable okay now let's also learn something about white spaces white spaces is a blank space that separates two elements for instance, when you have something like int and then space main, we have they are not the same because they are being separated by a space which is called a white space. Okay, remember when you have something like uh, vehicle is equal to BMW plus Toyota. There is no white space in them, so it's a single statement. It's a single statement.
Now let's learn something about constant and neutrals. They are values that cannot be changed in the program. Now, when you assign a value, or maybe let's assume you assign an integer value or a float or a car, in the course of uh, building the program, you cannot change the constant. You cannot change the constant. It will remain as it is throughout the program. Now let's learn about ways of defining constants. We can either use the hash defined preprocessor to define a constant, and then we can also use using the constant QS to define a constant. Example one. Now you can either write something like this. You write the keyword const and then float sp is equal to 3.142. Now sp value cannot be changed. The value for this one once it has been assigned as constant it cannot be changed in the course of our process. So let's try to build this program and see. Let's try to build this in our code block and see. Now. Okay, now let's build a program to see the constant assigned values. So let's include our stdio for standard input output header file let's also include conu then int main then let's call our braces so constant flute for sp is equal to 3.142 then our semicolon so printf quotation the value the value of pi is percentage f for float value with respect to sp so let's run this program and see the outcome okay 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 now the value of pi is 3.142 3.142 as we can see the value is 3.142 because it was assigned to be a constant so let's try to change the value over here and see what you will get Okay, let's change the value of SP. So let's say float SP is equal to three nine nine. So let's run and see the outcome. Okay. Okay, so you can see it's still giving me error over here. You can see it's still giving error. Conflicting type qualifiers for SP. Okay. 
so you can see that after we change we assign this uh, speed which is equal to 3.142 to be constant so now that we change it over here and then we started to run it you can see it was giving us error 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 you see so this is how constant once being assigned it cannot be changed in the course of the okay now let's go a program you know to conform with the constants that we just learned so let's open a new project console application next ne sorry next project title constant next okay okay now uh, this program will find this program will find this program will find volume of a sphere object a sphere object okay so let's include stdio dot h let's include conil then let's begin the main from where our function will begin so Float vol volume radius and then constant float for pi is equal to three point one four two. So printf enter the enter the radius of the sphere object. the sphere of the sphere object scan f now scan f is used to read numbers or variables from the <coughs> reader so you continue to apply them and then you understand every bit of it so percentage f address of radius so vol volume is equal to 4.0 divided by 3.0 by radius by radius radius let's print the volume of the sphere is 
equal to percentage f with respect to volume. So let's build this program and run it. See. Okay, okay. Enter the radius of the sphere object. So let's assume the radius of the sphere object is maybe six. So the volume of the sphere is 288. So this is the volume of the sphere with a radius of six. Okay. Now let's find an, another radius of a sphere object. Now let's assume the radius is also maybe 12. The volume of the sphere is 2304. So as far as constant is concerned, it can never be changed in the course of process once it's been defined. So this is how constant is being applied. Hi, in this topic we will be learning about data types. Uh, a data type is a way in which variables are being declared. And then we can also say that uh, data types are mainly used to allocate the memory. Now when we declare variables of any valid data, then the computer allocates some fixed size of memory. Now, the major or the basic data types are integer, float, and car. And car has a size of one byte and a value of minus one two eight one two seven with the format percentage C integer also has two bytes or four bytes uh, with a value of minus three two seven six eight to three two seven six seven with a format of percentage D we also have unsigned integer and then sign integer we also have signed and unsigned character etc and then we also have float for all uh, decimal numbers Now, 
let's continue as we have learned about data types and uh, sizes which they occupy in their memory let's continue now one may ask what is a preprocessor or what are preprocessors it's a simple macro processor that conceptually processes or process the source text of a C program. It is controlled by a special command line which begins with character hash. Lines which do not contain hash lines are called the program text. Now, what is a preprocessor? A preprocessor is a simple macro processor that conceptually processes the source text of a C program. It is controlled by a special command line. Now, what is a preprocessor? A preprocessor is a simple macro processor that conceptually process the source text of a C program. It is controlled by special command line which begins with character hash. Also, preprocessor is a keyword or statement which informs the compiler to make additional changes or modification in a program. So, it begins with hash symbol it begins with the hash symbol so let's look at some of the uses of preprocessor they are used for including files especially header files and then for instance you can use it hash include then followed by the less than and then greater than sign or quotation also for defining symbolic constant through the define command hash define command so you can define something like define sp 3.242 you can also use the preprocessor to define maybe hash error hash define hash if hash and if and so many and so much more so as we continue with our program you will see we'll be applying them in a program remember it always include a header file it always include a header file or it is used to define maybe a symbolic constant Let's learn something about header files. A header file is a file with extension .h, which contains C function declaration to be shared between several source files. Header file is a file with extension .h, which contains C function declaration to be shared between several source files we have inbuilt header files and user defined files let's go back to our program and then look at some of the header files so header files this is a header file this is a header file so with the work or with the help of this uh, preprocessor it is helping us to include a header file called stdio we also have header files like conio 
uh, string and so many more std lib std library for the full name and so many more so as you go on with our program you will learn about the header files and then we'll be applying them in the case of our program building Hi, in this section, we are going to learn something about storage class. Now, what is a storage, one may ask? Storage class specifies the storage location of a variable in the computer memory. That's its value, scope, and then its lifespan. Simply put, you can see that storage shows the visibility and the lifetime of a function basically there are four main types of storage class which they are auto register static and extend now auto storage is the default storage for all local variables it stores the variable in the random access memory the ram and then its scope is a function Scope here is referring to as the visibility of the variable. So when you see the variable, you can see it as a function in the auto storage class. Register also stores the variable in the CPU, that's the central processing unit. The default initial value is a garbage value and then it has a visibility of a function static here stores the variable in the ram by the random access memory the default initial value is zero it has a scope or visibility of a function extend also stores in the ram it has an initial default value of zero and then okay now we are going to build a program you know in support of our virus storage class so now let's open our code block create new project console application next c next project actually let's name this project as storage and then next next finish okay so let's go to the source and then use main.c okay so let's clean everything and then let's start afresh so first of all let's include a Let's include a stdio dot h and then but sorry let's give the program a title first before we can now so this program will display storage class okay now let's include our stdio dot 
they try that far and then nothing will be returned to void let's learn something about auto so maybe variable auto variable var underscore auto then let's call our brackets a semicolon okay so void avoid main main here refers to that nothing will be returned so let's give maybe integer x is equal to let's assume 10 our semicolon and then we print f let's print f uh, x is equal to x is equal to the percentage d with respect to x okay so var underscore auto or auto variable and we call our bracket and then void var underscore auto our bracket integer x is equal to maybe 20 print f and x is equal to percentage d with respect to x okay so now let's run this program and then see the result sorry 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 i left my semicolon okay 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 Now we can see from here that let's take a good look. Now we can see that from here the variable or auto variable which was assigned over here x is equal to 10. So that is why it displayed x first, which is the auto, that's the default number or the default variable x here before it printed this number here so all the time the default or the initial number would be displayed first and that is the auto that is the auto so take note of this Okay, now we are building a program to demonstrate a register storage class. So, after we've included our standard input output header file, let's return nothing void 
and then let's assign the variable variable register so void main void main is where our function is beginning so since we are beginning the function from main let's call our braces and then assign register integer x is equal to 5 print f print f x is equal to percentage sorry percentage d with respect to x var underscore reg then var underscore reg void name sorry void var underscore reg then we assign another function under the variable register so register integer x is equal to 5 and then let's give a function x is equal to x plus so let's print the value of x is equal to percentage d with respect to x always remember to terminate your program by a semicolon with that semicolon it makes your product or your program not terminated so always remember to take note of that let's go and run this program and see the outcome okay good 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 we can see that when we assign a value for register the initial value which happens to be 5 will be printed first and then the preceding ones also follows and then reaches a maximum or displays an equal value of numbers after the initial value so that is how uh register once we register a number in the storage class that is how it operates okay okay now we are going to build a program to demonstrate our external storage class so uh, we open a new project console application and then let's give this title extend extend storage okay so let me save this it's already in read MEC. Okay. And we finish. We click finish to so Now let's go to the source, the main, and then let's clean everything so that we can start. We 
uh, including a stdio.h header file and then let's assign an integer value x is equal to 5 then you will not be returning anything so void then variable var underscore extend semicolon bracket semicolon now this is from here where our main or our function is beginning then we call our braces so var underscore extend we call it once again and then x is equal to x plus 1 we are assigning some values for x which is an integer so we are increasing the value plus one so let's print f the value of x is equal to percentage d with respect to x Bar underscore extend. Always remember to call your semicolon to terminate the process, or else you will have difficulty, you know, running the program. So void bar underscore extend. So is also beginning another function x is equal to x plus one in a semicolon print f x is equal to Percentage D with respect to X. So let's run this program and see the outcome. Okay. Now we can see that with the external or the global storage the initial value that we assigned is always not declared but rather it start the declaration by increasing the value first and then it keeps on increasing it that is why we have an integer x which is equal to 5 but once we assign it globally it increased it before printing it and then thereby started increasing it again that is why we have six seven eight so that is how our global storage behaves now in this topic we are going to learn something about operators an operator is a symbol that tells the compiler to perform a specific mathematical or logical manipulations an operator is a symbol that tells the compiler to perform specific mathematical or logical manipulations types of operators are we have arithmetic operators relational operators logical operators assignment operators incremental or decremental operators and many more now let's learn something about arithmetic operators arithmetic operators are 
binary operators which are used to perform arithmetic operations so this symbol over here is a symbol of addition this is a symbol of subtraction this is a symbol of multiplication division and then when you want to find the remainder of a number this percentage sign here is called modulus which is used to find the remainder of a number so let's build a program to find out how uh, arithmetic operators operate okay now we are performing some you know basic arithmetic operations so we have an integer value of uh, a is equal to 21 integer b is equal to 10 and then we don't have any value for c but we are declaring c as a variable and then we can perform an operation of uh, C is equal to A plus B whereby we are adding the value of A and B in order to replace C so uh, C is equal to A plus B a uh, semicolon printf the value of C is percentage D with respect to C okay so let's go and run this program and see okay the value of c is 31 the value of c is 31 so you can see that when you add 21 and then 10 you will have a value of 21 uh, 31 sorry okay in the same manner let's change the values of uh, the op operand operator uh, plus and then let's use minus and then let's we are subtracting uh, 10 from 21 so let's do and run this one also and then see the outcome okay we can see that uh, the value of c is 11 because when you deduct 10 from 21 you get the final answer of 11 okay so now let's change the operator and then use multiplication okay so we are multiplying 10 and 21 so let's do the run this one also okay the value of c is 21 so it's as simple as that now let's try to divide a over b now what will happen here is when you in the first place let's go and run the program and see the outcome okay it is giving us a value of 2 c is 2 c is 2 this is because when you deduct sorry when we divide uh 21 by 10 it will give us a decimal value or a float value so in order to get a float value we have to convert or typecast this c here into a float value before we can get a answer to be a decimal or a float value so let's go ahead and run the program and see so. okay let's 
convert all these values into float values so float a is equal to 21.0 and then float b is equal to 10.0 So let's go down and run this program and see that. Can. Okay, we are getting a value of uh, minus ten point something something something. Now let's find the remainder percentage. Remember the mode loss or the remainder is always noted by percentage. So let's go there and do this. So let's convert this into integer values. So we can have a can have a uh, integer values so let's reload the program and then see the outcome okay so we can have a remainder of one because when you divide 21 by 10 there will be a remainder of one so this is how we put this you know work in C program okay uh there can be instances whereby we will be reading values you know from the user so in this case what we will do is we assign some two values say a b and then maybe we are finding the sum value so let's assign sum to be an integer so let's print f to display the option for the user so enter the two variables scan f which is used to read content uh, variable from the user percentage b percentage b percentage d with respect to the address of A address of B now the address over here 
is assigning this percentage D to this value and then percentage D to this B value okay so some that we are already assigned to be an integer is equal to a plus b so printf sum of printf the sum of a and b is a semicolon so let's go down run this program and see that okay so it says enter to enter the two variables so let's assume i assign one two three as the first variable and then the second variable to be 23 oh sorry 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 i should have you know assigned the percentage sign d percentage d with respect to sum okay now let's build it once again run it okay enter two variables so i'm entering one two three and then two three so the sum of a and b is 146 so this is how it is in the same way if you want to maybe find or read variables to find a difference or to subtract in the same way we can change this Sign the subtract over here. B. Subtract is equal to A minus B. So the subtraction of A and B is percentage of B. Subtract. Okay, so let's do them on this one. Also. Okay, enter two numbers. Let's assume I enter nine. I enter another number to be three. So the subtraction of A and B is six. So it's as simple as that. So always take note of. Okay, now let's go to the relational operators. These operators are used to compare two vi variables or values. These are mainly binary operators. And then the result of relational operators are either true or false. So uh, the numbers or the symbols used in relational operators for comparisons are the greater than sign less than sign less or equal sign greater or less sign equal to sign and then not equal to sign so less 
perform let's perform uh, let's build a program you know to demonstrate some relational operators so we would include a standard input output header file and then our main function begins so let's assign an integer value a is equal to say 21 b is equal to is also an integer value so b is equal to 10 so if this is where the comparison begins if a is equal to b then print If A is equal to B, then print the statement is true. The statement is true. But we can see that a here is not equal to b so let's build this program and see what we will get so i left my semicolon okay let's build this program so nothing was written okay So let's assume A is greater than B. So if we know that A is greater than B, then let's print A is greater than B. So let's print the outcome. Okay, so you can see A is greater than B. So in instances whereby okay, so let's assign another value. Now, C is equal to A is less than B.
So let's print out from. value of C is as in T as in T D with respect to C. So let's find out the outcome. Okay, now it is giving us zero because A is greater than B. Okay, so in instances whereby, in instances whereby uh, it becomes true, it will give us an answer of one. So let's change this equator sign and then see. Okay, so you can see that the value of C is 1. Okay, now let's go to assignment operators. Assignment operators are also binary operators which are used to assign values to a variable. And then we can write a program in this form you can write a program in this form b plus a sorry b plus is equal to a so let's find the value of this. Okay. So let's print the outcome. So already you know sorry 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 let's okay so let's assume we've only assigned a to be 21 then b we don't have any value for b so now b plus is equal to a so let's find the value of print of the value of B is equal to B is equal to percentage Respect to B. So let's terminate this process. Okay. So let's go there and this program and see the outcome. Okay. The value of B is one ten. Why? Because the increasing value of B of A is equal to 21 is equal to 21 is equal to 21 in the same way when we change the value of or the operator this 
building environment. We can have a value of 58 billion because today's this hi in this topic we are going to learn something about decision making now decision making is where why the programmer issues a condition test it and when it is positive or negative set of statements are being executed uh, and under decision makings we have the if statement if else statement switch statement nested and so we are going to learn something about the if statement with the if statement is when a statement is evaluated to either true or false the block of code will get executed any non zero values are assumed to be true and all or if it is either zero or no then it is assumed as false let us go to our code block and then see how if statement do behave okay so assuming uh we assign some integer values a is equal to 48 b is equal to 45 then we can say that a is greater than b so over here this statement is true so what we do is we assign a condition that if into bracket a is greater than b then we will print a is greater than b so let's print this statement let's execute this statement and see the outcome okay so we can see from here that a is greater than b because a is 48 and b is 45 okay in the same way When we have uh, something like let's change the values let's change the values and then print the outcome and see okay nothing got executed because our statement is false so therefore nothing was being executed okay so this is how the statement behaved okay so let's put a is less than b and then let's execute it and see the outcome okay okay a is less than b but as the statement tends to be true we will have a printing like a is less than b so let once more let's print it and see the outcome okay so we can see that a is less than b so it means our statement is true so this is how the if statement operates this is how the if statement operates okay now let's go to the if else statement now with the if else statement if the condition is true set of instructions inside the if block will get executed in the same way if the condition happens to be false set of instructions inside the else block will also get executed now let's go back to our code block and then we see what we are talking about now for instance if we enter maybe a number as we have already done in with the if statement and then 
the number happens to be uh, let's assume as we did already let's assume we are enter maybe three and then the number is positive okay as it has displayed it to be a positive number we can also write something like if a is greater than zero print the number is positive then we come here and then type else print the number is negative so okay so let's execute this program and then see the outcome let's clean this <laughs> and then okay so if I enter maybe 34 you say the number is positive good and then in the same way with the same program if I enter maybe minus 98 the number is negative so this is how the if else statement also be behaves so in the other way if I enter a number which is greater than zero it will display it. the number is positive but when I also enter something which is false or is not up to the condition over here then it will print it rather print this statement so this is how the if else statement also behaves okay in continuation of the if else statement now we have built a program here to show the grade of students now assuming uh let's assign the mark of the student to be m and then the pass mark is 50 so when the student have 50 it means the student have passed but when the student have something less than 50 the student has failed so what we do is uh, we enter integer m and then print f enter the mark of the student to display it on the screen then scan f to read the mark from the user so we give a, a condition using the if statement that if m is less than 50 then print student field else if m is greater than uh, 50 print student pass so let's run this program and see the outcome okay enter the mark of the student now so let's assume i enter 71 i press enter he said the student pass okay in the same way let me enter let me enter 24 or 23 i press enter so you can see here that the student failed so anytime we are using the if else statement we have to issue a condition over here and then when the condition is true it will print it when the condition is false we will use the if else if or if else statement you know to print the negative or the 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 the, the non-true statement so this is how the if else statement also this
in this topic we are going to learn something about functions now a function is a piece of code or block of codes used in performing a specific task c language has only one function and that is the main that we've already been learning or we've learned about so far now types of functions are we have library functions and then we have the user defined functions what are library functions library functions are inbuilt functions that are contained in the header files so as we can see when we include the header file we can use or we see some library functions such as printf scanf exit strcpy sqrt for square root and many more they are all library functions and then when we talk about user defined functions they are also functions that are being uh, declared by the user or the programmer now when we are defining a function we have uh, for instance let's take a good look at this one when we have return underscore type and then we have function underscore name they are called parameter list they are parameter list and then what is contained in the braces is called the body of the function so in defining a function or definition of a function function sorry we have return type function name parameter and then we have function of a body so let's look at the return type a function may return a value the return underscore type is a data type of the value that the function returns so some functions perform the desired operations without retaining a value in this case the return underscore type is the keyword for void the keyword void so as far as void is concerned it means nothing will be retained okay now let's also go to function name this is the actual name of the function the function name and the parameter list together constitute the function signature parameter a parameter is like a placeholder or maybe an address of of of, of, of a variable so when a function is invoked you pass a value to the parameter this value is referred to as actual parameter or argument the parameter list refers to the type order and number of the parameters of a function parameters are optional that is a function may contain no parameters so take no, note of that and then function of a body the function body contains a collection of statements that define what the function does okay So now let's learn something about function declaration. For the compiler to know about the function name and how to call it, we use the function declaration to perform this task. So in performing this task, categorically we have the call by function and then function by argument. So let's learn about call by function. When a function is being called to perform a specific task parameters are passed along with the function name and if function returns a value then you can store the return value once again when a function is being called to perform a specific task parameters are passed along with the function name and if function returns a value then you can store the return value so let's build a program on this you know so that we can understand what we're talking about
okay now provided we have uh, let's have a program and then uh, this let's give this program a title this program explains function or explains call by function okay so over here we are including this stdo header file and then let's assign some integer values so with these integer values we will be finding the maximum number so we will be finding the maximum number so thereby uh, assigning two integer values number one and then number two so our function our main function begins over here so over here we are assigning integer a which is equal to 5 and b which is equal to 12 and then the re return value return value will be equal to maximum which is a and then b so let's print the value of uh, the return which is the number so the number since we don't know the maximum number and then we assign two integer values what we will get over here what will be written therefore will be in place of the first numbers that we assign over here that the integer number one and the integer number two over here and then the result will be if the number is greater than uh, if number one is greater than number two then the result will be equal to number one else if the number one is less than two then it will display the number two over here and then we get a maximum number or maximum value being returned so let's build this program and see let's build a sorry could not read this okay okay so we can see that maximum value is 12 the maximum value is 12 because uh, 12 is greater than 5 so we can boldly say that this uh, explains or this function is being called by function because we assign a specific function and then the outcome that we had or uh, the number that we had over here was being called into another function before it returned the value so that is it for call by function okay previously we learned something about call by value function so this one we are also going to learn something about uh, function by call by reference so this program would this program would help us you know to find a cube of a number using call by reference function so call by reference function this method copies the address of an argument into the former parameter in the function the address is used to assess the actual argument using the call so therefore changes made to the parameter affect the past argument so let's 
run this program and then afterwards we can explain it so let's after including our stdio header file void cube integer pointer b you already know something about pointer so integer main that is where our function is beginning so let's assign an integer value number which is equal to three and then cube with respect to the number print of the cube of the number is percentage d number return zero void cube is equal to integer pointer b so we can see that the number here is pointing to b it's pointing to b and so therefore we are finding the cube of three they are finding the cube of three so void cube integer pointer b this over here we are also getting a different function so you can see that this function is a different function and then this is also a different function so let's unless uh, let's we uh, forget pointer b is equal to pointer b times pointer b times pointer b times pointer b because cube means the three times or the product of the number times the product of the number times the product of the number because cube is referring to the number in three four so let's run this program and see the outcome okay the cube of the number is 27 fine why are we getting 27 you can see that there has been there has been no changes in the values that have been sorry we can see that there has been no changes in the values because the numbers that were assigned weren't affected but it was only the function that we called it's only the changes that were being made so you can see that if there will be any changes it doesn't affect the value but rather it is inside the function that the changes occurs so that is all about function okay now that we learned something about call by a function let's go to function by argument now if a function is using argument there must be a variable declaration that accepts the value of the argument so we have under function by argument we have function by call value and then function by or function call by reference so let's take them one after the other then let's build a program to you know understand the call by value function and then call by reference function okay in this program uh, we are we already assigned some two integers a and b this program will define function to swap values and then we are assigning two integer values a and b we are using void swap because void means we are not returning anything nothing will be returned and so swap here when we are interchanging the values or the integer values that will be assigned so let's assume integer temperature and then temperature is equal to a 
A is equal to B and B is equal to maybe temperature. We can boldly say that we have interchange or swap the various variables. So therefore, temperature becomes uh, is equal to A. We have replaced temperature by A and then A is equal to B and then B is equal to temperature. So we can say that A is equal to B is equal to temperature from here we have swap or interchange the, the, the variables and then hence they are all the same so from here our function begins so let's assign, assign two integer integers so number one which is equal to five number two which is equal to twelve so print f and then let's print before swapping number one is percentage d number two percentage d with respect to number one and two and then let's swap the numbers so swap number one number two so print after swapping number one is to percentage d number two is to percentage d with respect to number two and then number one so carefully check from here you can see that here before we were swapping we swap number one and then number two we printed it before we were being swapped over here that is why here number two from here number one became number two over here after swapping them and then number two also became number one over here so let's print or let's run this program okay so we can see that before swapping number one was five and then number two was twelve so as we can we, we can see from here number one was five and then number two was twelve and then after we swap the numbers after swapping we can see that number one became 12 and then number two became five that is uh, function by core value so that is it hi in this topic we are going to learn something about iris an array is used to store multiple values which belongs to the same data type. Instead of declaring the individual variables such as number 0, number 1, number 2, number 3, 2, number 9, you can declare an array variable like numbers and use number in a square bracket 0, number square bracket 1. Uh, tonight to represent the individual variables so let's you know uh, explain this with a diagram okay so now, we can see that uh, we have a table of numbers or array. They all belong to the same data type. So over here, what are contained in this storage locations are called the elements. They are called the element so they are called element so over here the first element here is the first element and then what we have at the ending here becomes our last element okay now let's go to this table also table 2 and see 
we have uh, a table for storing pin numbers or uh, an array of pin numbers so in the first element which is a size of zero what we have in that storage area is 100 and then over here we have a storage location of 105 and then we have 110 then 115120 in the last element which is in with size of 4 okay so over here we can see that we can see that this pin here becomes or is the array name Sorry. this pin name here is the array name and then the zero one two three four here are the index they are called the indexes that is the zero one two three so all the indexes they start from zero and then end to the last element so they are called the index and then the pin square bracket zero pin square bracket one they are all the array or the array elements okay so we will build the program you know, to explain more on arrays so we are building a program that would read the array size from the user read and then display the highest number so we included a standard input output header file and then we assigned we assigned uh, an integer value for n which is the size of the array and then number for the various element that will be displayed and then the highest number which is a float so we read something from the user and then we issue the loop over here a loop over here so here is declaration declaration of array size to n okay then we issue the loop over here whereby uh, our number was equated to zero but is less than the size of the array and then we find the incremental value of the number and then we also display the number and then read another value from the user whereby the number becomes the size of that value that we, the user entered and so we issued another loop we issued a highest which is equal to the values the size of zero so we issue the for loop then the number is equal to one but is less than the size of the array then incremental value of the number and then also we issued another if loop whereby all the values with the size of the number size being the number being greater than the highest number and so therefore highest value is equal to the values highest is equal to values 
the size being equal to the number. So we are displaying the number to a decimal. Okay, so over here, here is the end of here is the end of the if block. Then here is also. So let's compile and execute this program. Okay, so we said we should enter the size of the array. So let's enter maybe a size of maybe eight. Okay, and then the values we have twenty. So if you have a size of 8 and then the value is 20 then the highest value will be 1 negative 1 okay negative 1 so let's display it over here and then see okay so that we can easily understand that one so a size of 8 and then maybe 20 yeah, so it's displaying a scientific number and then that is that okay okay we are building another program We are building another program for array that would read size of array from the user and then print the highest value. So array two. Okay. A program that leads array size from the user and prints the highest value. value okay So let's assign an integer n and then num a number and then float value for the highest number this value for highest okay let's print it enter the array size enter the array size
at it on this side, okay. So scan F. Scan F. Percentage D. With respect to address N. Okay. Now, let's declare array size with a size n. So, float value, float value n. Which is the array size? Size. So let's initialize some numbers. So for number is equal to zero, and then number, sorry, num is less than n which is the the, the, the array size and then num incremental value okay so let's use the if block or if chain block so if value if value sorry value square bracket count is greater than highest Then highest also is equal to value is equal to value square bracket num number then print f highest value highest value is equal to percentage percentage dot 2f With respect to highest, okay. So, what we just did is over here we assign some numbers, integer numbers, whereby the n is the array size and the number is the element or the variable and then flute here yeah. flute value for highest which is the number or the highest value that you will be finding and so over here we read something from the user or we read the array size from the user and then here also we declare an array with size of n so declaration of array size n okay declaration of array size n 
and so they use the for loop to build a loop and so under the for loop we had an if so the if loop had this end over here so here is the end of the if end of if loop or end of if block and then here is also end of end of the for block okay so let's compile and execute this program and see what we get sorry okay so let's build a program a program to initialize A program to initialize an array size of ten. Okay. So we include a st. So let's assign an array n with a size of 10. And then an integer i j. Okay. So now let's initialize each element of an array n to zero so for i is equal to zero i is less than the array size which is 10 and then i increasing value or incremental value for i Okay, so n is n to i will be equal to i plus hundred i plus hundred whereby we are setting each element at a location i to i plus 100 so over here set a location for or uh, let's set a location at i to i plus 100 okay so let's go to j also let's go to j also so for j is equal to 0 and then j is less than so incremental value for j so 
print f element element square bracket percentage d is equal to percentage d okay so with respect to j and n square bracket j okay right. so what we did is we assigned an array size of 10 and then thereby assigning also an integer variables i and j so over here we initialize we initialize element of an array initialize element of array n to zero okay we initialize element of an array n to zero and then thereby n over here for i is equal to zero i is less than the array size n and then i incremental value that is why we had n square bracket i is equal to i plus 100 that is setting a location at i to i plus 100 and then for j j is equal to zero j is less than 10 and then j incremental value so let's run this program and then see the outcome first of all let's go and run it okay Sorry, I forgot to use semicolon rather. Okay, so let's go and run this program. Okay, nice, nice one. Nice one. After compiling and executing this program, we can see that the size of array 10. Okay, so that is that we saw that the array size of 10 we assign uh, i to an increasing uh, value of 100 so that is the location to i plus 100 and then whereby i is also less than the, 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 the array size which is equal to 10 so 100 will be increasing by i which is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so 100 will be increasing by i that is why we have this number so that is that for array initialization okay Okay, now let's ra build another program, you know, using a double dimensional array. So, new project console application. Sorry. Double dimensional. Okay, so I will DD. Okay, let's use it. Let's go. So this array. show five 
okay so let's build an array which will show five rows and two columns so this program shows array with five rows and two columns okay so let's include a standard input output So over here, let's assign integer values A with a size of 5 and then with another size 2. The first one is for the row and then the second size is for the column. So let's display their various elements so we have zero and zero so we have zero and zero we have one and two we have two and four We have uh, three and six. And then we also have four and eight. Okay. All right. So What we are going to do is we will assign two integer values C I and G. Okay. So we will use a loop to initialize each of them. So for I is equal to zero. less than 5 which is the array size for the first element or the column and then i plus plus ok so with this with this for j another loop inside i for j is equal to zero j is less than two and then j plus plus okay plus plus so let's print let's print the variables or the elements Print the element, the various element for I and G 
inside a so percentage d and then sorry, percentage d for the other element and then is equal to percentage with respect to i and j so i j and then the array size i and then j okay so that is that Is that so? Uh, this is an end of inner loop, and then this is end of outer loop. So let's compile and execute this. Okay, we can see that we have been able to store all the variables that we have or the element for the first array, and then we have been able to also store. A second array so when we compile and execute this is the result that we get so that is that for double dimensional array hi in this topic we are going to learn something about pointers a pointer is a variable whose value is the address of another variable. We can see a pointer stores uh, a variable in another variable, or simply put, it is the address of another variable. So, for instance, when we have and then uh, a pointer is denoted by the star notation. So, for instance, when you have int star ip, it is a pointer to an integer. And then, when you have double, which is denoted by star dp, it's also a pointer to a double. When we have a float variable, the pointer will be star fp, which is a pointer to a float variable and then we have car cp which is also a pointer to uh, a character variable so now let's build a program you know to support pointers so over here let's open a new project console application we select C and then let's give this project title pointer okay okay so we have a uh, main.c source code already so let's build a simple program for pointer so let's include a 
stdi will head that file uh, main function uh, braces so let's declare some variables so integer var is equal to 20 and then integer star or pointer ip which is a pointer variable declaration and so ip is equal to address of var over here we are storing the address of variable into the pointer which is uh, 20 so we are storing this 20 into the address of the pointer so let's over here we are storing address of variable into pointer variable okay so let's print address of var variable is the percentage of x this is addressing to the var is addressing to the variable okay So now let's store the address or let's address it into the pointer variable. So let's print let's print address stored pointer address stored in IP variable address stored in IP variable address stored in IP variable is also percentage x also percentage x percentage x also with respect or addressing to a pointer IP okay so over here what we did was uh, we stored address stored in pointer address stored in pointer variable okay and so 
less less assess the values let's assess the values using the pointer that we, we, we have so let's assess the values by using the printer so values of pointer ip variable is also percentage g percentage g address to the pointer ip okay here assessing the values using the pointer value pointer okay so finally let's return zero and then let's go and run this program by compiling it and see the outcome. Okay, so when compiled and executed it produces this result. produce this result so the address or the storage location is 28ff load and then address in IP variable is 28ff load and the value of the pointed variable is 20 which is the 20 that we assigned over here okay so this is it for pointers let's go to another program Okay, now let's build another program to access pointer into an array. So let's include a uh, standard input output header file. And so we will be assigning a constant integer for max max which is equal to three. Remember, this is a global variable. So, int name, where our main function will be beginning. And so, let's declare a variable array. Sorry. Declare. variable array with element 10 hundred and thousand okay so let's assign an integer i and pointer PTR okay so what we are going to do is let us have array address in a pointer so we have PTR is equal to variable okay 
you feel me? For I is equal to zero. And then I is less than max. Okay. So let's find I increasing value. So let's print F the address address of variable of array is percentage D. percentage d which is equal to which is equal to the percentage x percentage x with respect to i and ptr respect to the uh, and ptr the, the pointer okay So and then PTR increasing value. Okay. So let's return zero and then so we assigned a constant integer max which is equal to three. And then our main function began. And so we assign an array of variable with an element of ten hundred thousand. And then we have an address in the pointer which is equal to PTR equal to variable. So we use a loop over here for i is equal to zero and then i is less than max. So i increasing value and then that we will be printing the address of the variable and then the storage location or the printer so let's compile and execute this program so Okay, so I will expect it. I didn't fire before the token. Uh, expected identifier before the pointer. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So instead of comma, I didn't made it. Let's stop. So let's compile and execute it and see. Okay, okay, okay. So it has been compiled and then produce us with this result. So address of var zero is a address of var one is sixty four, address of var two is three a. So that is that for pointer to an array.
Hi, in this section, we are going to learn something about strings. In C programming language, a string is actually a one dimensional array of characters which is being terminated by a null character denoted by a slash O. Thus, a null terminated string contains the characters that comprises the string followed by a null. So, for instance, when you are creating an array of strings for the character hello, we have a size of 6 array. So, let's count them and see. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. This is the null terminator which is terminating for this string. So, let's build a program and then see how strings are being you know running a compiler so let's create a new project console application strings So first of all, let's include a uh, header file stdio and main function. Then let's assign car value greeting. With an array size of six, which is equal to our basis, the single quote. Sorry. remember to bring your semicolon without it your program cannot be run well, let's print f the greeting message greeting message percentage s and then respect to greeting let's return zero okay okay so let's go and run this program okay so we have a greeting message hello it has printed a String for him. Okay, now more on strings. Let's write a program. A program that would swap. Or oh, that would copy string into another string that copies string into another string. Okay, 
let's include a let's include a stdio header file this time around let's include string because we will be using manipulators which are found in the string header file so let's okay so our function main function begins let's call our braces by assigning car value of a which is equal to car value of an array a which is equal to uh, let's type maybe party is an artist is an artist but he is an artist and then another car be for which we don't know so let's put an array size of maybe 50 okay so let's use strcpy which is a header file that will copy a into b I would copy A into B so let's print the target string is equal to percentage S with respect to B So over here, we are putting A into B, we are putting A into B, or we are putting B into A, putting B into A, okay. So, uh, let's go down and run this program and see. Okay, the target string is equal to Sparty is an artist. So this manipulator helps to copy you know one string into another string. Okay now let's build another program. print reverse of a string of a string include a string header file a string header file okay so let's print Uh, a 
SDA. String U is equal to is a name of an artist and then let's use the manipulator st ref str ref bracket str and we are printing the reverse of this str which is a string str uh, str so over here it would print it puts str or print or print uh, the same as printing strings printing the string so it's the same thing the same as printing a string so let's go and run this program okay so we can see that it has printed this thing in a reverse form so that is that as far as string is concerned Hi, in this section, we are going to learn something about input and output function. This is the process of feeding data to the computer and displaying them to the user. In C programming, we have inbuilt functions that perform such tasks. We have the standard files, which contain the standard input, standard output, standard error, standard input can be assessed by std in which is being done by inputting it using the keyboard and then we also have the standard output assessed by std out which displays the inputted data on the screen and then we have standard error with std err and then it also displays the error on the screen we also have a get car and put car with get car it reads the next available character from the screen and returns it as an integer and then with put car it passes the character on the screen and returns it we also have the scan f and print f that we've been using throughout the program and then what you do is with scan f it waits for the user to input a text and then the print f displays it on the screen so let's do a simple program you know to conform with what we have learned over here so let's open our code block Okay, so let's open a new project. A new project. Let's give this project title Input. Input Output. Okay. Okay, so with input output, let's okay. So let's include our 
std standard header file and then let's write our function let's assign an integer say a and then let's print enter a value enter a value okay so a is equal to get car Okay, A is equal to get car. Okay, so print F you entered you entered. semicolon and then let's use it car also okay and then let's put a into put car and, uh, semicolon okay so let's return zero finally okay so over here let's run this program Let's reboot it and okay. Okay, it says enter a value. So let me enter maybe three. So he said you entered three. Okay, fine. let me enter uh, my name okay Derek and then I press enter okay you can see that when we compile and execute it it waits for us to input a text and after pressing enter the text was displayed but over here the put car only read the single character which is the d thereby omitting all these characters so what the put card does is it reads only a single character and then display it so that is that for input and output characters Hi, in this topic, we are going to learn something about typecasting. This is a way of converting a variable from one data type to another data type. For instance, when we have a class size of 4, and then out of the 4, their total max is 21, or the sum of their max is 21, and then we want to find the average. Now, what will happen is that we first have to convert this sum into double we have to convert this sum here into double 
so that we can easily divide it since this is data type is an integer we have to convert it to double so that we can divide it and then have a double mean or average so this process okay now let's open our code blocks create a new project console application we click next we select C then next let's give this project title type casting okay then we click on next I have a project named type casting already so I want to overwrite it then we click finish so we click on the source main and then we have a default main function over here so let's clean them and then start to build a new one so first of all we have to include our stdio.h which is the header file and then our function in here oh, sorry then our braces so int sum is equal to 21 our size is equal to 4 let's call our semicolon and then double mean also we are calling these variables as well so now double mean or mean is equal to double sum this is because we want to convert sum or we want to type cast sum into a double value or variable so that our outcome or the answer will yield a double variable so our mean is equal to double sum divided by size so now let's point the value of mean is equal to the percentage float With respect to the mean so remember always to bring your semicolon and then let's go then run this program and see the outcome okay very good very good now we can see that after compilation the value of sum is first converted to type of the double and then gets divided before it produces the answer or the value so we can see that this value of sum over here the 21 will first have to be converted into a double value here 21 here is an integer so it has to be converted into a double value before it gets divided by this in order to provide or to produce the mean or the average value. So this is how type casting is.
Hi. Hi. In this topic, we are going to learn something about recursion. Recursion is a process of repeating an item or variable by itself, repeating it over and over and over and over. That's a recursion or a recursive call. So now let's open our code blocks and then take a good look at how recursion also do operate. So let's click on new project and then console application. We click next, see. Then let's give this project title recursion. Sorry. Okay, we click next and then we click finish. So let's go to the source main and then we have our default. program here so let's give this a title of or let's comment it as a request a recursive program a recursive program okay so now let's include a standard input and output function sorry a header file standard input output header file and then let's call our main function And then in the main function let's print something like let's print spot consult let's print spot consult okay then we call our a semicolon sorry then you call another main over here and then this main will be where the repetition or the recursive call will start so let's give this as recursive Recursive call. And then let's close. Okay, we have already closed. So we have our braces over here. And then, yeah. So this is a simple program to show the repetition of a variable. So now let's build and run this program and see how it will look like okay 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 so we can see that so we can see that spot consult has repeatedly repeated itself over and over and over and over and over and over so this process of repeating itself over and over and over is called recursion okay so this is how it's all about as far as recursion is concerned.
now let's learn something about a variable variable is a name given to a storage area that a program can manipulate it is also an entity which changes during execution of a program for instance we can have a variable car for character integer float double for a double float void which means nothing is to be returned examples include integer var float y car x now we have rules for declaring a variable and then rule number one says you should not start a variable with a digit you can't start a variable by naming it with a number also keywords cannot be used as a variable we learned keywords earlier examples which will include auto uh, load s Hi, in our previous lesson, we learned about data types. We also learned about the basic data types, the, the, the size or the bytes they occupy in a computer memory, and then their format specifiers. In this topic, we are going to learn something about variables. And we can see a variable is a name given to a storage area that a computer or program can manipulate. It is also an entity which changes during execution of a program. Now, with car, which is for all character values, we also have integers, int for all positive numbers and then float for all decimal numbers double for double uh, maybe a double float and then void which means nothing will be written in a case of our uh, execution so for instance we can declare these variables int var also float y and then car x when we are declaring variables now we have uh, rules for declaring a variable for instance uh, rule number one states that a variable should not start with a digit you can start a variable name with a number. Two, keywords can't be used as a variable. We've learned about keywords already. Examples of keywords are uh, auto, switch, static, all those keywords that we learned can be used hi in this topic we are going to learn something about memory management the c programming language provides several functions for memory allocation and management the function can be found in the std library header file now, when we store a name of a person, we can have an array size, and then if we don't know the size, we can assign it to a maximum of 100 characters, thereby getting the car name and then the array size. But in instances whereby we do not know the length or the size of the car we want to store, we can use dynamic memory location. So let's build a simple program, you know, 
so that we can understand what we are talking about so i have a program here let's take a look at it okay now this program is helping us to add some basic elements so a program that calculates the sum that calculates that calculates the sum of numbers entered by the user okay so now over here we will include our stdio header file and then memory allocations oh, they are also stored in the std library so we also included std library and then our function over here so over here we assign some set of integer values so we assign n and then i a pointer and then a sum which has been equated to zero okay so for instance the n over here is representing the number of elements that the person wants to add or the number of numbers to be added that is n okay so now the pointer ptr is also is equal to the integer and then the memory allocation n times the size of the size of over here is referring to the size of the integer value so over here we assigned we assign an argument that if ptr is equal to now then it means it will print error memory not allocated and then when you type zero it will exit it okay also when you enter the element you're using a for loop over here and then if uh, the for loop i is equal to zero uh, i has been equated to zero so therefore i is less than n and then the plus plus of i okay so what will we would assign over here will stand for the pointer and then add it to i okay so therefore sum plus is equal to the pointer of ptr plus i so what we get becomes a sum okay so let's run this program and see let's compile it okay so let's uh maybe enter a zero a zero element an element which doesn't have any numbers in it so let's press enter and see okay we can see that enter an element the sum is equal to zero the sum is equal to zero because over here over here sum was already assigned or equated to zero that is why we had zero over here as we type the element zero okay now so let's compile again and then okay so let me enter four elements that means we are adding four different numbers so the first number is two the second number is seven the third number is three and then our last number supposing it is also three okay so you see it summed them up and then the answer became 15 because 3 plus 3 will be 6 
plus 7 will be 13 and then plus 2 here which is our first element it will become 15 so it's as simple as that so that is that for memory allocation hi in this section you are going to learn something about memory management and now the C language programming provides several functions for memory allocation and management the functions can be found in the std library which is a header file so uh, when we want to allocate a memory dynamically we have dynamic memory location when we store a name of a person we can have an array maximum size of 100 characters thereby getting something like uh, let me explain this over here You see what we learned in array was when uh, we are storing a name for a person we can have an array size for instance we can have an array size of 10 5 but the, the maximum size of an array we can have will be 100 so for instance when we are we want to write or want to you know store an array or in a situation whereby the length or the size of the car we want to store we cannot you know for instance if we don't know the size of the array we can even write something like the car and then hi in this topic we are going to learn something about command line argument it's a programming through DOS prompt of a PC thus it's a programming through the disk operating system of a PC when we want to pass some values to a C program when executed it can be done through the command line and then let's go to the steps for you know starting up the command prompt first of all you go to you click the start button and then you type run in the search and then open it type cmd and press enter and then command prompt windows will start then type the command to be executed in the field thereby knowing the location or the directory where your program that you want to get executed has been stored and then that is it so let's do the small program you know to pass some argument into the command line argument So let's include a okay sorry this let's give the program a title so this program uh, a program to check check argument supplied supplied from sorry, from the user from 
the command line okay so let's include a std i will file okay then our main function okay so let's assign some values in here like argument c and then a car pointer a car pointer sorry car pointer to an array okay Okay, now so let's call our brace and then pass some argument if ag c is equal to maybe two then let's print Let's print the argument provided is let's print the argument provided is percentage s for strength. a car value for uh, the pointer and one okay else let's use else if here else if the add c is greater than 2 let's print too many arguments supplied too many arguments Applied. Okay. And then let's use else. Let's print one argument is expected. That is when the string provided or the character provided is less than two. It's less than two. Okay. So let's run this program and see the outcome. Okay. So our command line has been you know compiling and executed so that is that